Hello, my name is Ian Cunningham, co-founder of Action Career Services and the Corporate Healing Support Group. I'm joined on In Transition with my co-host, Stephen Edwards, who is also a co-founder of Action Career Services and the Corporate Healing Support Group. We just finished talking to Lisa Bose. And if you don't know who Lisa Bose is, she is a sports broadcasting pioneer. She is an award-winning author. She is an acclaimed public speaker. And she's also motivated by the tiniest word. And that word is no, Ian. And no is a word that typically will stop us dead in our tracks. But that doesn't stop Lisa. In fact, Lisa looks forward to the notes. And if you spend any time with Lisa, you know, it's infectious. I have to say, it really is infectious. Um, she's been able to utilize those notes to transition from being a, a pioneering broadcaster to an award-winning author. Just phenomenal. Just great to see. Great success. Absolutely. So now I invite you to watch In Transition, the podcast, the story of Lisa Bose. Welcome everybody to In Transition, the podcast. My name is Ian Cunningham. I'm with Stephen Edwards, my co-host, and Lisa Bowes. How are you today, Lisa? I'm <laughs> fantastic. It's so great to see you guys, and I love the name of this podcast. Oh, In thank you. Transition. It sounds so good. It doesn't sound negative at all. It sounds positive. And that's where we always have to be in our heads, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Now, you've led me down the road because In Transition actually does mean something to us that are in it and have been part of it. And we're talking about career transition and we're talking about being restructured. Um, first, I want to talk about you, your beginnings in broadcasting because you were a pioneer and not just for female broadcasters in this country, for sports broadcasting alone in this country. So I'd love to hear how you stepped into that role. Wow. Well, how long do we have? What <laughs> Your time. <laughs> well, because we're talking about, you know, 30 years ago. So I will try to uh, succinctly explain to you how that all happened. But I actually was heading towards sports psychology. That's hmm. what I wanted to do when I was in university. And while I was playing soccer for the uh, university for Western, that's where I went to school for my phys ed degree. I actually got so engaged in, in the in the student radio. Hmm. And so I actually, while I was getting my degree, I got involved in Rogers Cable TV. I actually tried to write for the Gazette. That was the student newspaper because, and, and obviously the radio. So that was my big thing. I thought, wow, I've, I grew up with boys. I always socialized in sport. And I thought, wow, I could maybe get, get to this thing as a career. Of course, at that time, very, very few women were in sports broadcasting. And uh, the late, great Phyllis George was really someone who I looked up to um, from CBS and, and NFL Today. And so I changed my entire uh, trajectory. Instead of sports psychology, I quickly got out of that, went to a uh, radio and television broadcast arts program in Conestoga and began my path. I then uh, became a writer at TSN, the first female editorial assistant, and that's really where I learned the craft of broadcasting, of writing, and that really is how I, how I got into it. It was completely through uh, it, volunteering after playing a sport, volunteering at the radio station through playing a sport. So it's kind of neat how by playing, uh, that actually led to a career choice. So uh, I then went and did a number of things, live event, news, documentary units, um, Olympic games. We don't have enough time for all of that. But anyway, <laughs> this is to say a fantastic career until I actually, my job was eliminated in 2017 at CTV here in Calgary. We've had conversations, Lisa, obviously, uh, you know, leading up to getting you on and being in this, in this interview. Um, and I remember um, a comment you made talking about the suck it up attitude where that first firing that happened at TSN, it took years before you were willing and ready to actually feel and address what had happened to you. Uh, yes, to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Sorry, Ian, yeah, that's very true because I, I think because, uh, and I said earlier that I was really socialized with boys. I had all boys on my street growing up. I have a brother and and so, and then I got into a, a workplace where it was all men that I work with, and I am very comfortable working with men, maybe because of those er, that early upbringing I had. 
But I think men, uh, and well, this is just my experience, of course, but I felt that, that being fired, being laid off is a weakness, is, is mm. such a weak thing to have, like, how could you fail that way? How could you, how did you let that happen? You're not strong enough, right? So, so you kind of, your initial reaction, this emotional thing you go through is feeling embarrassed, at least I did. I felt embarrassed, I felt weak. I felt, I felt like, well, failure. But in that process of coming through that, I then learned that failure works. Mm. That is from Sir James Dyson, and I love that comment. And, and it is true. You have to just suck it up. And they say it's not emotional. It's not personal when you are laid off or fired. But come on, for sure it is because it's, <laughs> it's personal to you. Sure, they can tell you, well, we had to make cuts in the ledger and we had to restructure, but man, oh man, it's personal to you. And I think for men, especially because of how men are wired, I, I do believe this, you know, you're supposed to be the, the breadwinner to bring the bacon home to, you know, all those things that society has put in men in that kind of, um, I guess, uh, how they've put men to be, this is how they should be behaving or, or doing. And I guess I, I really, un, I guess I kind of related to some of that because maybe I do think a little more like that. And so I felt this was just a complete and utter failure. But I've learned that that's a good thing. Mm. Failure works. Well, I can agree with you on the feeling um, emasculated is the way I felt. Um, there we go. And, and yes, it, it, whether it's society, whether it's the way men are wired, whatever it is, the fact that I didn't feel like I was providing for my family was part of the reason that drove my feelings of depression um, I, I, and, and low self-worth. I think one of the things being, being put in transition is losing that value of worthiness. Um, your confidence and your idea of, can I actually contribute anymore? There must, like, is there something wrong with me? Like, why mm -hmm. am I not working anymore? Um, and I think learning how to deal with that failure and seeing that failure as an opportunity um, and like you've said, is truly the way that you manage yourself, manage yourself through this. I'll go ahead, Stephen, yeah, jump in for me. <laughs> yeah, it's, and, and Lisa, I think this, no, I'm enjoying the conversation, this is great. Um, no, look, I think, um, and Lisa, you're so right. I think for, for guys of a certain age, um, you know, I'm a, I'm, a, you've got baby boom, and then you've got, you know, people like me, Gen Xers, and, and yeah, we were brought up, um, you know, you go to school, you do your education, you go out, you find a job and, you know, you, you, you start a family and you look after your family. And that's, that's you know, and, and you know, today it's probably a little bit different. You know, I mean, I think, you know, we're, we're educating our daughters, you know, in the same way that we, you know, in, in the same way as our sons now, you know, the, there isn't really that, that difference. So, so you're absolutely right. There is, when you go through that myself, you know, when I went through that, it was, um, it was devastating. Uh, and you do go through that, oh, my God, what now? Um, so so let me ask you uh -huh. um, this, because there is, you go through, you mentioned being in depression, and, and all of us can relate, and we've had other guests on, on past uh, In Transition podcasts who said the same thing. So let me ask you the same question I've asked them is, is how do you go from that depression, and, and for all of us it impacts differently, to now reinventing yourself? Uh -huh to getting yourself back out there. And you've gone through this four times um, in, in different okay. guises. So I'm gonna ask the question in, in, in two ways. First of all, from, for example, the TSN experience. And then second of all, which is more timely and, and, uh, and, and uh, uh, current, is how do, you re how do you bounce back from what COVID, uh, or the impact of COVID? So let, let's go with TSN first. How do you bounce back? How do you get out of that depression and rebuild yourself, rebrand yourself? Wow. Well, it does. It takes time, first of all, and it is a grieving process. We are going through that shock. We're going through sadness. We're going through anger. Right. And that's what I try to stress to everybody who's going through this. And there are now just just more people in the media that were just um, laid off just mm -hmm. recently uh, from our conversation here today. And so I'm thinking about their process and it is a process. Mm -hmm. You have to allow yourself. I feel you have to give your your brain time to cope, first of all. You have to just cope and just kind of say, okay, I'm, I'm healthy, I'm alive, I have, look at all these things that I have around me. I'm going to be okay, and I'm, I have a lot to offer this world, and I have value. Sure, this group didn't think I had value, 
but I have value. And you have to get yourself into that mindset. So the one thing I always like to do is I do walk. I walk every day. And sometimes when I walk, I, I think of things that I didn't think of at the house with everything going on here. And and it really does calm me down. I always, always try to walk in nature. I think there's a great value to that for our soul. Uh, there's so many studies about how that can help us. Mm -hmm. uh, I always uh, talk to people. Um, because when I talk to people and talk to friends, half the time I learn something I never thought about my current situation. They might offer something that can help me instead of me sitting here stewing in my own little, you know, my brain going, oh, my God, what am I going to do? I, I, I always try to make a converse, you know, have a conversation with a friend of mine, someone who is a positive person in my life, a champion, and they will invariably get me sure. thinking in a better frame of mind mm -hmm. always i think that can i just i really believe in that having a conversation with someone can really change your your focus your mindset and then the third thing i always like to do is i'll write down five things that i'm grat grateful for in that particular day so for example my you know my 14 year old she said hey do you want to play tennis mom i mean i just about that actually is worth five <laughs> grateful things <laughs> because uh, you know, I actually didn't know if you really like to play tennis that much, and I don't really have many partners to play tennis with these days, so I was just over the moon. So I think you need to find all those positive things, and I'm actually going to share something with you. Uh, well, actually, maybe I'll, I'll hold it for when you ask me about the advice part, but uh, about the future. Um, I think, I guess that's the thing. How do you pull yourself out of it? It's mm -hmm. so hard, but this too shall pass. Man, oh man, does that ever ring true? I've had brutal days, okay? I've had brutal days, but they do not last for much more than two or three days. As long as I walk, talk to somebody, write thing, write down what I'm grateful for. And, and it's amazing. And, and, right? and all these things, uh, uh, it's phenomenal advice. And I know the three of us have all benefited from, from that advice. We've all taken that advice. And it, it's about building that resilience, isn't it? it it's, it's about, because look, the, the reality of today is you don't know what's around the corner and you want to be able to insulate yourself from you know if you find yourself in this situation again which history would dictate that you that it's possible then you want to at least build that resilience so you're not going back to square one um you know you're learning from those you know and ian's been through this a few times you're learning from those initial experiences well i think that the more you get uh the more you are hit and i always it's totally a boxing to me it's all about boxing and the more you take those punches like rocky then the more resilient you become. And so if we go back to that TSN, the why that was super devastating is because it had never happened to me before. Mm -hmm. I'd always been, here's the next job, here's the next job, DVD, right. DVD, yeah. you're doing so well, blah, 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 I'm in the right career path. And then whammo, what? And then that was devastation. Then the next one happens, oh, that's kind of disappointing. Then the third happens and I'm like, shmeh, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay i've been in this ring before and i honestly believe that rocky you know how many times did he get pummeled there right from apollo creed and yet he still kept standing he got up off the mat and that's what you have to do and i just received literally two weeks ago a huge knockout blow in my life mm -hmm. for something i was working on for two years i invested time energy money and man did that had just floored me mm -hmm. but you know what i'm back up on the mat you know i just i took some time to cope with that and to recognize that that was a good no mm -hmm. the no sets you free someone just related that to me on linkedin recently that is so true we're it's always looking for yeses but the no's are okay don't be afraid of the no's the no's will set you free and it's and it, it really is a matter of perspective. And Ian, you've written about this, um, and certainly I've posted on LinkedIn around this. It's 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 looking at something from from the other side. So it's the glass half full. Um, and when you're in those throws, it's difficult to look at things that way. But I think you know, taking your advice, taking your lead, is getting that support that support group around you, those good people around you. And again, like you said, not just the people who just 
pander and, and say the nice things. You want somebody who's going to kick your butt every once in a while, who's, who's going to tell, give you the honest truth and say, you know what, you can't do this. You know, you, you need to get up. You know, you do need that shake every once in a while. COVID kind of took a lot from, it's taken a lot from, from the global society in general. Uh, but, you know, bring this back to you. You'd said that, you know, COVID kind of put you in this transition situation again. So mm -hmm. how does Lisa Bowles bounce back from that? From COVID? Mm -hmm. Well, again, Lisa Bowles bound, uh, bounces, well, that's kind of neat. Lisa Bowles bounces back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't easy to say. There we go. I'm writing it down right now. Lisa Bowles bounces back. <laughs> I see a book. I see a yeah. book. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, COVID hits, and obviously the first thing we're thinking about is we're thinking about our health, and we're thinking about our families, and we're thinking about our friends. And then we think about how this is affecting us job-wise and how are we going to, basically, how are we going to exist in this new reality? It's the transition, it's the pivot, which I am kind of tired of that word, but really that's what we all had to do was the pivot, right? Mm -hmm. And I can share with you that I have now made, I think I'm up to six pivots since March, 2020. Ooh. So not one, but six. And so what do we do? Okay, so COVID happens, okay, here's the new reality. So then I go into a phase where I'm constantly searching and thinking about what do people need? How do we fill the need? That's what my father always taught me. He was a businessman and he always said, really business is all about filling the need. So I'm obviously, so as an author of a children's book series now, and here I am now with schools. Schools are my, one of my main revenue generating points is speaking as well, doing the speaking. So in-person is out. Schools are up against it. I recognize mm -hmm. what they're facing. So how are we going to fill a need to get my message out about what our book series is all about against the backdrop of COVID. And so I'm having to pivot. We're doing, instead of being in person, now we're doing on video and we're sending a USB to the school. Mm -hmm. Or I'm learning. I took a, n a number of workshops in the United States about, about pivoting as an author for a virtual. Mm -hmm. uh, what does my virtual school look like? Now I'm also, something else that just happened actually just last week, I, I did a, a talk for early childhood professionals. So a whole other avenue where my books would relate to that group of people. Right. So that's yet another. I took my books out onto the curb in, my, in neighborhoods in Calgary and, and, and would, would charge a very nominal fee for me to read to a community at mm -hmm. distance with a mic. Okay, so this, we don't need to go into all my pivots, but the point is you have to look at the situation. What were you doing before? And now how are you going to adapt to this new world? And I'm going to read this now to you because it, it is my mom. My mom just told me this today. A pessimist complains about the wind. Mm. An optimist feels the wind is about to change. A leader adjusts the sales. Uh, wow, that's great. Isn't that good? It's outstanding. It's outstanding. So that's your, there's your COVID mindset. And there's your and now we're in a like what are we doing kind of coming out of COVID? So we're constantly transitioning to, okay, so now we're doing this, but we have to keep in mind that this could change at any minute. So we have to keep adjusting the sales for where we're at in that particular moment in time like right look at alberta we're different from where you are in ontario so mm -hmm. i'm constantly trying to mitigate and figure out how i can fit in and offer a service that's going to generate revenue for me amidst this pandemic time and and ian i think that's a star moment so put a star oh by yeah the, i wrote it down by the, uh, wrote yeah. it down right there, there <laughs> Yes, my mom. Excellent. Way to go, Lisa's mom. Thank yeah. you for that. <laughs> so we brought up the author, we brought up the books. For people that don't know, you're an award winning author with the Lucy Tribe series. Um, where did that come from? How did that was it part of one of your transition journeys? Was it always something you knew you were going to do? I think something that I've done through my whole career, and, you know, we always talk about me as the, uh, you know, TSN and a reporter, producer and all those things. 
But for the last 20 years, I actually have diversified off of that. I was doing, so when I was at the score, I actually started a program called Kidcasters, hmm. which was for um, grades seven and eight, and it was hmm. about broadcasting based, okay? So I started that. So I've always diversified. I did a lot of speaking, a lot of these school events. I also did media performance training for the last 10, 15 years. So I've always had a core kind of day job, but then I always use some of my skill set to, to do different things off of that one trajectory. And then the Lucy series was another one that came in when right around the Vancouver Olympic Games. And so I thought, oh, wow, we could create a series of books and get that out in time for the Olympics. This was in 2008. No. Uh, broadcast, uh, sorry, not broadcasting. Broadcasting actually works at a very quick pace. Publishing is glacial. And I didn't realize how hard this would be. This is actually one of the hardest things I've ever done mm. is actually get a book published. And it took 14 rejections, seven years, but I believed in it so much, I wasn't going to quit. And so I kept doing that on the side of doing broadcasting. So that's really where the Lucy series came from. And, and really as my phys ed background, it's my writing background. It's my love of sports. It's as I became a parent. It's a yeah, phys ed background. It's, it's, it's all wrapped up. My entire career is wrapped up into this book series now. And then my speaking, and I speak to it now. So that's where that comes from. And it's, it's interesting that, I mean, 14 rejections. For, the, so for those of you who are listening who are in transition, there is a very definite message there because... <laughs> 14 rejection. So we we we've sort of re we branded the term rejection to to what are we what are redirection. We redirection. Redirection. So redirect. So going back to your theme around the no's are good. Um, you know, I, I think about um, you know, any invention, you know, light bulb, you name it, Edison with a light bulb, whoever it is, the number of times that they try and fail, but every single failure gets you closer to the goal. Sir James um, Dyson, Sir go. James Dyson, a go. fellow Brit, who, right? <laughs> I mean, 3,538 or whatever it is, it's over mm. 3,000 prototypes. So that's why he's the one that says failure works. So that's keep right. doing it. That's right. So for, for any of our friends that are in transition, the message is keep going. You're going to get those redirections. They are a step, they're getting you a step closer to where you want to be. So you know, when you get them, celebrate them, as Zim would say, celebrate the smalls, yeah. you know, and keep pushing, uh, keep pushing towards the goal, as, as Lisa's done. Yes, absolutely. And so we've got, where's the future of Lucy Tries now? Where's the future of Lisa Bowes moving forward out of COVID, um, speaking, possibly broadcasting? Um, where do you see yourself going, Lisa? There's just so many things that one can do in one's life. It's hard to point in my <laughs> life anyway. I really have, I think I'm, I have an ADD when it comes to a question like that, Ian, because I, I, my attention is all, is sometimes it's almost to my detriment, but then sometimes it helps me because if one thing isn't really working for me, at least I've got something else. My mom thinks I really need to just focus on one thing, <laughs> but, um, you know, the Lucy, the Lucy Tries series, I've had some really some challenges trying to get that moving and, and to, the, to the point where it's comfortable for me to earn a living from it. Most authors, we actually make below the poverty line. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just share that with you now. This is not something that, that you can really truly have a comfortable living at unless you can find what I do, which is the speaking and the schools. And we, we do, unless, you know, you're very prolific and i mean obviously you know margaret atwood i mean amazing right amazing career and and has so many incredible things on the go she's a real inspiration to me um but i think that for lucy tries obviously i'm very excited because we do have actually a new book coming it does take a long time for books to be um published it's coming in 2023 so for those of you who have been following, I guess I'm not sure, I, I don't want to date myself. So for those of you who are watching the American League playoffs, <laughs> the ALCS. I mean, <laughs> there we go. What a segue. 
we, we do have Lucy Tries Baseball is coming, so that's exciting. And I guess what I'd love to see is I'd love to see her animated one day mm. to reach more and more children. So the, the, the mission of her series is to inspire kids to be active and persevere and, and to do that as they're learning to read so they can lead healthier and happier lives. And that mission alone is, and the, is the wonderful feedback I have from the children across the country and ed educators and this last group, these early childhood professionals, that's what keeps me going because I know it has such a important message. And so it's hard for me to pull away from it, even though it's very hard to make a living out of this and to, to pay our bills. But I feel so strongly about it, it's hard for me to pull away. And I think that this last big no I received actually gives me some clarity mm -hmm. to actually carry the journey now in this direction. I was almost handcuffed in a way by waiting for that other opportunity. And then once I got the no, it's almost like the filter comes up and you realize, oh, I actually could take it this direction now. So that's again why the no's can be so important and helpful. And Even I, though they suck in the beginning, they can really be helpful. So I'm sorry, Ian, I kind of went around about there, but no, you I just want to see her animated <laughs> one day. I continue to engage with children, not just not just here in Canada, but all over all over the world. And, and on that note, the, the Lucy series is available in different languages as well. Um, yes. Very uh, exciting news, actually. Uh oh. I don't know. Hold on one sec. Oh, I don't, unfortunately, I don't have the covers here, but uh, this book actually, it's coming out in uh, French and Spanish. The soccer title is coming out October 12th. So very soon, later this month. And, and then the baseball book is just coming out. And yes, it's in simplified Chinese and most of them are in French. So thank you very much. LucyTriesSports.com is the website run by our, our fabulous publisher, Orca Books. And, and someday, somehow, you heard it here first on In Transition, Lucy is going to transition to an animated, an animated chapter. And she will therefore reach many more kids about the value of sport, being active, and perseverance. And folks, that was Lisa working the sails. <laughs> working the sails, catching that wind. <laughs> well, I get, adjusting I, the sails. Adjusting the right. sails. S-A-L-E-S. -E right. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, I'm gonna ask you for one more sell, Lisa. Um, it is in transition. Um, you have experienced it, uh, like you said, four times. Um, what's your advice for people that are just entering into their first or second experiences of being uh, restructured? Yes, I, I feel your emotional um, challenges right now, and I know it's so difficult. There's some wonderful things to keep in mind is that you are not alone. You are not alone, and you have people like, like me and, and Stephen and Ian to reach out to to talk to. So DM me anytime, first of all, or send me a note on LinkedIn. Uh, so there's that. That's the one good thing to know. The second good thing to know is that you have value. You have worth and never forget that. Someone was telling me just the other day that I had to really start to increase the number of people that follow me on Twitter, like how important that was. And I thought to myself, really, it, I guess that's where we've come to, where <laughs> number of followers is what is going to determine my worth and i fight back against that i'm sorry guys you know what i know my worth i know my value and i will i will just continue the way i continue because my work is is part of my value i feel and i feel that the number of how many people are following me on a social media platform shouldn't dictate that uh, but that's my generation too right so i guess what i'm saying is that you have value you have people around you. There's so many resources. It's brutal, but don't worry and don't try. You know, if you start to feel yourself going down into the valley, know this too shall pass. You will get out to the top of the mountain again. Please walk. It's the best thing you can do. If you can't walk, then maybe, you know, rowing machine or bike or something, or even just stretching, yoga, anything like that, because 
that helps your mind because your body is active and there's so much research that mind body connection talk to some friends write down what you're grateful for you do those things i honestly believe that you will be able to come out of this actually i don't believe it i know it you will come out of it and your next best job your next best thing is right around the corner and anyone who's feel, feeling motivated by what lisa just said go hit up lisa on her instagram page because she does some great little great little hits of her walking in beautiful Calgary, you know, and she will encourage you. It's incredibly motivating. It's kind of got me out of my chair a few times to get out there and just go walk. Um, as she said, the, the thought processes, the clarity, and there's so many benefits. Um, and the other thing, I'm just going to add to that, Lisa, one thing that you've done uh, as well is to focus on others and not yourself. If you focus on others, it's amazing the, the opportunities that, that present themselves. But it's amazing all of a sudden those those sort of troughs sort of start to dissipate and disappear. So so um yes, as they say, it's not about it's not about us, yeah. You're right. Yeah, law, law of attraction. I really mm -hmm. believe in that too, Stephen. You're right. Yeah, if you go and focus and give, how about we give to others? Mm -hmm. How about that as an idea? It's always take, take, me, 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 right? The selfie, this and I I know I'm just from a different generation. What can I say, guys? <laughs> I, have love -hate, I have a love hate relationship with social media, right? <laughs> I understand the value. There is some value, but it's not my worth. It's it's not. It can't be. It, it mm -hmm. cannot be that way for me anyway. Um, but uh, so love hate with that. But let's give instead of always taking and thinking about ourselves. Why don't we give and we volunteer? It's amazing how that also can change our mindset. Law of attraction is so real. It really is. I really believe in that. If you give out to the universe all that positive energy. You will receive that in return. I, I honestly believe that. And again, remember, pessimists complain about the wind. Optimists <laughs> feels the wind is about to change, and a leader adapts those sails. <laughs> excellent, Lisa. There we go. I'm, I know, I know. I'm excellent. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Mom Forrest. <laughs> that was excellent. And Lisa, I want to thank you for joining us on uh, this edition of In Transition, the podcast. Wish you all the best when Lucy tries and everything else, and we'll stay in touch. Let's do that, because we all have to keep talking to get us out of those valleys. Absolutely. Thank you again for joining us, Lisa. Definitely. Great conversation. Thank you, guys. Take care.